Yep. Uh, so two, two sort of separate and inter intermingling questions. Um, you were talking about Europe being around 300 million people. So why is why is a group of similar size, which is America, uh, it, it, will it face you think the right and left can talk to each other? Sure. You think they speak the same language? Right, right, right. right. So, you see that fragmenting occurring. Mm -hmm. And they really are, not only are they speaking different languages, they're, they really are speaking different languages. Yeah. It's the right way of thinking about it. Yes, it's very, very dangerous. You know, I, I think the U.S. worked for a long time, first of all, because it didn't always have 300 million people. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people to put under one umbrella. Now, the, the utility of the American system is that it is a hierarchy. Right? There's individuals, families, towns, states, underneath a somewhat loose federal structure. And that's sort of, so it's not, a, it's not a monolith where everyone has to speak precisely the same language. It's got some flexibility built into its structure because it's, 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 it's formulated into components which have a certain amount of autonomy. And so far that's worked sufficiently well. Whether it will, con and it'll probably continue to work. I mean, the Americans are a very, very robust people, and they've gone through things that are analogous to what they're going through now many times. God only knows, right? But, but it's a very d dangerous thing to presume that the Americans are down for the count because they have an uncanny ability to rise out from the ashes even stronger than they were before. But you can certainly see the danger lurking. In Europe, that's, that's a different thing. Like, I think the European state is doomed because I think it grew too fast. And it, it severed the connection between, like there's not the proper hierarchy of, of identification. So, and people are saying, wait, I, Brussels? Like who the hell are you guys? Why are you making decisions for us? And we don't agree with your decisions. And like, are you sure that Greece and Germany can be in the same place? Because that's by no means self-evident, right? The Germans aren't very happy about it and the Greeks aren't very happy about it. And one of the rules for making an organization is that it's a lot easier to make a functional organization worse than it is to make a dysfunctional organization better. And so you might say, well, you've got Germany and France and, and England, well, let's say Germany and France, powerhouses, especially Germany, they can afford to bring Greece in. Well, maybe, but there's no evidence that they can afford it. So, I mean, Greece is unbelievably corrupt. No one pays their income tax. That's a big problem, right? And bringing them into a union at a high order has no effect whatsoever on the micro behaviors. And the thing is, the micro behaviors have to be rectified. And no one really knows how to do that. How do you stop a country where people don't pay their taxes from, how do you stop the in people from not paying their taxes? Why do we pay our taxes? Who knows? We could just all of a sudden decide not to, you know, and the government wouldn't have the resources to run around gathering them all up. For one reason or another, it's become customary for people in functional Western democracies to pay their taxes. But why? Who knows? It would have been way easier for us just to do what the Greeks did and pretend to pay them, you know. So they're too big, I think. And so the people on the right are saying, back to the nation. And like, I understand why they're doing that, but. But, the danger is the nation will subordinate the individual. And I do see it as another example of safe spaces. It's just scales different. So, and that's why I think that the proper antidote to that, to both the chaos on the left and the order on the right, roughly speaking, is to walk the proper line in the middle. And we better do that because things are not, things are too chaotic at the moment. So, it's not good. Maybe it's really good, that's possible, but we're in a state where, I really believe we're in a state where things could go any number of ways, and there's no, there's no predicting it. So, and I've never felt that, you know, I, 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 I mean, I lived in the 80s, and, you know, political correctness rose up in the 90s as well, and I can remember a lot of what happened in the early 70s with the oil crisis and all that, so there were times when things were shaky, but they weren't shaky the way they are now. They're an internal shakiness, rather than something that was a threat that was seemed to be imposed from the outside. And that's different. And, and it's, 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 it is associated with, with this intellectual war that's going on with postmodernism and neo-Marxism and all of that as well. So 